<laughs> Hi, I'm Little Pooh. I live in your radio. This is my dog, Sugar Bear. <laughs> he lives in here, too. And I'm William Cooper, and you're listening to the Hour of the Time. And I'm Pooh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and invisible, with, liber with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. For a minute you forgot you were going to do the pledge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You did very well. You're welcome. And I appreciate your help. You're welcome. See you later. Bye. Bye. Well, folks, I'll tell you, I've been uh, all day long. Since the moment I got out of bed this morning until just a few min moments ago, was, <laughs> was taking care of my email on the Internet. What a... <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I can't not look at one because it might be something important, but invariably when I do, it's just more bullshit. And I get two posts of everything that there is, and sometimes five or six. And it's not because people are sending me all this stuff. It's some peculiarity of the Internet that just automatically sends me all this stuff. And every once in a while, there are gems, and there are real intelligent people to talk with and exchange mail with, and there are really good posts and up-to-the-minute information and, and good research done by um, people who really want to help. But as I've told you before, the majority of it is nothing but a waste of my time and everybody else's time and I'm not the only one who thinks that if you are on the internet you will see posts saying what is this crap why am I getting five or six messages of every message that's posted who are these people and why are they tormenting me <laughs> ah it's incredible all day long email And it's partly my fault because uh, in our efforts to get out the uh, newspaper, this issue, I didn't do my email for several days in a row. And with me, several days in a row is like monumental overload. Some people can skip two weeks <laughs> and spend five minutes at the computer. If I skip one day, I'm going to be at the computer for hours. And... Uh, but that's okay. You know, I'm just showing my humanity here. It's my turn to complain about the Internet. Well, folks, uh, you know, I've said over and over on this broadcast that there are a lot of rotten apples out there in the police departments. The police officers have told me to my face that they carry throwaways and that they would plant them on somebody without any conscience, without a moment's hesitation, just to save themselves if they make a mistake or if they want to frame somebody and uh, you know I get calls from these police officers say oh no we're not really that way bullshit a few of you if you're a police officer and you're listening are good people most police departments are corrupt to the core and I'm not making an off the wall statement this is the truth absolute truth most police officers turn their head if they're not participating and ignore it and do nothing about it most participate especially if they've been on the force for a long period of time I told you what the police officers in Los Angeles had told me the ones that I knew when I lived in Los Angeles and I got calls from police officers telling me, oh, no, no, if, 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 if it's anybody, it's just maybe one or two. Well, have you read Furman's tape? Have you read the transcript of Detective Furman's tape? Did you hear the part on television a week or two ago where he was quoted as uh, calling another police officer not a real police officer because he wouldn't plan a throwaway on a quote nigger unquote to frame him 
Now don't tell me Furman is just one police officer. Don't tell me that that doesn't pervade the Los Angeles police force because I knew a lot of those people and that's exactly what I heard from them. Not just Furman. You see, I knew a lot of them. I helped train the entire LA PD bomb squad to dive. I helped train them in underwater demolitions. So I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just spouting off. I also know police officers all over the place. A little city like St. John's tried to frame one of my people. Tried to frame one of my people. Used his own daughter to do it. Now I'm going to tell you something. If I get any more calls from police officers telling me that I'm way off base, I'm going to blow you out because you're liars. And that's all there is to it. And when I see you helping to straighten out this nation by starting in your own police departments and sheriff's departments to straighten them out, even if it means you lose your stupid job, then I'll hold you up as an example to the nation. But until then, no. You're part of the problem. And if you don't like it, turn off your radio and go to bed. You know I'm telling the truth. You know damn well I'm telling the truth. And I'm sick of it. Sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of reading the letters that I get from people who are persecuted by police. I'm sick and tired of hearing about people like Joe Love in Indianapolis who was murdered by police. I sit on the edge of my chair every day waiting for something to happen to Linda Thompson and other patriot leaders perpetrated by police. who get their intelligence from people like the anti-defamation liars. Shysters like the Southern Poverty Law Center. Liars like Morris Dees. And call legitimate people who love the Constitution, love liberty, and love the United States of America terrorists and go to meetings held by your police lieutenants and your police sergeants and sit there quiet while they describe the patriots in this country as lunatics and the reason you don't say anything is because you haven't got the balls you're afraid you'll lose your job you're a bunch of wimp cowards and one of these days you're gonna have to face the patriots in this country because you haven't got the guts to do what is right and you haven't got the guts to stand on the side that is right. And that is the truth. And frankly, my dear Scarlet, I don't give a damn whether you like it or not. I'm going to live my life by the truth, and you can lie to yourself every day if you want to. There's going to be a reckoning. Americans will do everything in their power to prevent bloodshed in the streets as long as they possibly can. But there's going to be a day when every single good person in this country is going to draw a line. And once they draw that line, there is no stepping backward. I have devoted my entire life to preventing this And the very people who are supposed to uphold the law are murdering and ripping the Constitution to shreds on a daily basis, breaking down doors with no warrants, confiscating property, killing people, arresting people, framing people. The United States has more people in prison per capita than any other nation in the world. So if you're a police officer, don't call me and tell me how lily pure you are. I'll blow you out. I'll blow you out so hard, it's not even funny. I will make you sweat. I have reams of documentation here that I just took off the internet today about police all over this country. If you want to know what got me riled up. It was sifting through all the bullshit to find out 
that we're not safe not from the criminals we're not safe from the police I'm going to take your calls tonight if anybody got their copy of Veritas I'd like to know what you think of it I'd like to hear from you if you got your copy of Veritas I'd also like to hear from people who know what the police are really doing around this country I want to hear what's going on in your area with the police and the sheriff have you heard about the great paintball ambush we'll talk about that too incredible happened in the USA perpetrated by police don't go away I'll be right back. For those of you who may be new listeners or may have forgotten, the number to call is 520-333-4578. That's 520-333-4578. Make sure when you call that you got something intelligent to say because I'm not in a good mood tonight. Well, we're going to take your calls tonight, folks. The number is 520-333-4578. 520-333-4578. I understand we were off the air for a few minutes. I don't know how long. I don't know what you missed. But I want to hear from people who received their copy of Veritas. If there's anybody out there who received their copy of Veritas, I'd like to hear from you. I'd also like to hear from people about what the police and the sheriffs are doing in your part of the country to screw the Constitution. We know they're doing it. <laughs> so let's hear from you. Let's hear how they're doing it. Let's hear who's doing it. If you got your copy of Veritas, I want to hear from you. I want to hear what you think of it. This latest edition, issue number six. Good evening. You're on the air. Wow. How you doing, Bill? Pretty good. Oh, man. I can't believe I'm talking to Bill Cooper. This is uh, Clayton from St. Louis. Hello, Clayton. I've uh, been listening to your program. I uh, find it very informative, educational, and most of all, accurate. Uh, it's an important source for me. Um, you know what they're doing here in St. Louis? It's being reported in some alternative media. Is uh, The uh, police, especially in the city, are conducting uh, gun sweeps through a lot of neighborhoods, especially uh, you know the projects. And yeah. They're just going in, and they're just, you know, without a warrant, without warning, nothing, just going in there. Oh, can't be. These are the guys that call me and tell me they're all good guys. They they, they support the law. They wouldn't do anything against the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got the full support of City Hall and supposedly... Uh, oh, but these are America's sweethearts. Oh, they would never do anything like that. Yeah, and, and you know, these, these get law enforcement officers saying that... Uh, Actually, the people that uh, they go in and take not only their guns, but supposedly drugs, too. Uh, they said that, you know, the majority of the people that they're doing this to are in agreement with it. I mean, this is what they're reporting here uh, on the uh, news, the local news. Yeah, and the militia blew up the federal building in Oklahoma City, and the Branch Davidians were uh, uh, some kind of Satan's representative on Earth because David Koresh went to bed with a few women besides the one he was married to. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, Vicki Weaver was a threat to Lon Horiuchi. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she was going to bite his ear off uh, from uh, 150 yards away. I, you know, I just, you know, I, uh, I, to me it just seems like, you know, the uh, U.S. government has declared war on, on the American citizen. It's not just U.S. government, it's your local police officers, it's your local sheriff's department, it's the whole bunch. Have you heard about this bill, uh, H.R. 1544, that, uh, outlaws what they call paramilitary organizations, which could be construed as two people who have weapons, <laughs> uh, who, who might be what the, the government considers anti-government, they could be construed as a paramilitary organization. Basically, it's going against, you know, the militias that have formed. Have you heard about that? No, they can't. Militia is uh, authorized under the law, the traditions, and the history of the country. The militia is not a paramilitary organization. The militia is a military organization. Well, I, 
you and I are in agreement on that, but of course the government will see it otherwise when that law goes. Oh, so no, the Supreme Court won't. The Supreme Court has to back the militia. Now it might be a fight getting up to the Supreme Court, and it might be uh, another kind of a fight if they ever come against the militia. Because I'm telling you right now, uh, there's going to be a line drawn in the sand uh, beyond which uh, to go is going to be absolutely suicide for everybody. And uh, once they start, if they start uh, trying to round up militia leaders, I'm afraid that's where I draw the line. Number one, I'm a leader, and, and I'm not going to go. And uh, number two, I'm not going to let them take the other leaders of the only uh, wall against slavery that's left in this country, and that's the militia members who are willing to fight in defense of the Constitution for the United States of America. Well, yeah, I'm a member of the first Missouri Volunteer Militia here, and, uh, you know, we go on monthly exercises, and uh, so, you know, I've, I'm looking at this bill with interest. But, you know, in Ohio... Uh, it occurred about a month or two ago. Um, the, uh, I guess it was a state policeman pulled over a uh, militia member in Ohio, and he happened to be a pastor of the uh, state militia, and this uh, cop just opened fire on him and killed him. Yeah, I know. And well, I, I'm pretty sure you reported on that. Of course, the police... The yeah, I did. His name is Hill. Yeah, that's right. And the policeman tried to say that the guy was going to, you know, open fire on him, but... What the cop did know is that uh, there were people watching this incident. And yeah, three other wit three witnesses. Right. Yeah. So you know, I kind of see, this, you know, like you're saying, that's just oh, but they wouldn't do this. These are police officers. They're sworn to uphold the law and protect the citizenry. They're sworn to protect and defend the Constitution for the United States of America. These are are honorable men and women. That's uh, Orwellian newspeak, I think, or something like that. You know, that's what, you know, they're, they're pumping us full of, you know, but uh, then, you know, their actions, you know, betray them. But I don't know, Bill, you know, I'm, I'm getting to the point where, you know, I'm really getting paranoid. Is, is, is this a natural reaction for me, or is it unnatural? No, paranoia is, uh, is perfectly natural when you know somebody's trying to get you. Nothing wrong with it. Okay, well, uh, paranoia is only bad when you know somebody's trying to get you when nobody is. Okay. Well, then this is natural, and I shouldn't feel alarmed that I'm, I'm feeling these reactions all the time. No, it's a, uh, it's a good uh, thing for your own self-preservation. It's sort of like an early warning thing to start looking over your shoulder. Okay. Well, hey, Bill, I enjoy your show, and uh, keep up the great work. Thank you. Oh, by the way, do you give Veritas? Uh... No, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get it because, you know, I've been getting the spotlight, but uh, I want to get the Veritas. Well, you better because you'll never read in spotlight what we print in Veritas. Okay. Uh, never, ever, not in a hundred million years. Well, I'm pretty... <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, spotlight's okay, but I just wonder about... What's your... Can I... You know how Spotlight started out? No. It was the newspaper for a communist youth group, which Carto headed many years ago. Valentine was also mixed up in the Communist Party. You ever read Hegel? You know about the dialectic? You know how it works? Uh, yeah, two ends <laughs> against each other. Yeah, but the same people control both sides. Yeah, they control both sides, yeah. Yeah, so that they can uh, make sure that the outcome is what they want it to be. You wait and see who ends up in the stockades and who's outside holding the keys. How do I get Veritas, Bill? Well, you know something? Uh, I thought this was going to happen in the next issue, but Mike did it in this issue, so I didn't have any warning and didn't prepare people and didn't tell them. So it's going to be a big surprise. Um, we cut the prices literally in half, and it wasn't supposed to happen until issue number seven. But the ad is in issue number six, so we have to honor that ad. So as soon as you get the copy in your hands, those prices take effect. It's $27 for now for 24 issues. And the only reason we can do this is because of the tremendous support we had from those who became charter subscribers right from the beginning and, um, and who helped in our efforts and, and paid the, uh, the price that we initially had to use for subscribers or for subscriptions in order to be able to deliver those tremendous number of free copies to every desk in Washington. And they're not sent through the mail. They're hand-delivered to every office 
to every desk in Washington, all the movers and shakers. So uh, while I'm at it, I want to thank everybody who were charter subscribers. Uh, because of you, the paper is going to be a success. Success is assured now. Uh, there is no, there are no financial difficulties now. We're not making any big profit, but the paper is going to support itself, thanks to all of you, and uh, thanks to all of you, we were able to lower our subscription rates and prices. Prices for single current issue is three dollars now. So if you just want issue number six, send us three dollars postpaid, and we'll send it off to you. If you want a subscription for 24 issues, it's $27, and um, you'll see the rest of the prices when you get the paper. But uh, this came as a surprise to me because I thought it wasn't going to happen until issue number seven, So, um, but it's happened. And so we, we'll back it, uh, even though it's an issue early, we will honor the, the ad. Uh, you got an 800 number on that? No, but we've got an address. Okay. Send, make your check or money order out to Veritas, spelled V as in Victor, E-R-I-T-A-S, okay. and send it to P.O. Box 3390, St. John's, Arizona, 85936. That's Veritas, P.O. Box 3390, St. John's, Arizona, 85936. I'll send you a, oh, probably a money order. I don't have a bank account. I'm outside the system, so to speak. That's good. Send us a money order. I'll send you a money order. It'll be uh, in the mail tomorrow. Great. God bless. God bless you, and thanks for calling. Uh -huh, bye-bye. Numbers 520-333-4578. like to hear from you, especially if you've received your issue of Veritas. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes. Good morning, Bill. Uh, concerning, uh, may I ask a question uh, concerning the satellite receiving system? Sure. Yes. I'd like to uh, speak with someone who could give me more technical information. I'm <laughs> sincerely interested. I've tried calling your research center several we, times. and I we, we don't have anybody who has more technical information. We're not satellite salespeople. We're just doing this because so many people wanted to know how to get on satellite. We put this together originally for radio stations who wanted to downlink the Patriot broadcasts on Galaxy 6. And um, we decided to go ahead and, and offer it to the public. Yes, you, you had Gary, uh, what's his last name, Bruce on, yeah. on the air? Yeah, unfortunately we can't have a guest on and take calls too. It's we're, we're not a great big radio station. Okay, uh, what is the current cost on tapes? For uh, if I want to order a tape of that program you had, I believe. Well, that's that would be the best thing for you to do. It's ten dollars if you're not a member. Eight dollars if you are. Yeah. Just specify the date and the subject, mm -hmm. and make all checks or money orders payable to Annie A N N I E. I got it. And send them to the Intelligence Service, Post Office Box One Four Two Zero, Sholo, Arizona. 85901. That's P.O. Box 1420, Sholo, Arizona, 85901. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Yeah, I wish we had some experts here, but we don't, folks. We're, we're just folks like you, and we're not in that business. We just did it to help you out. If you want to take advantage of it, fine. If you want to quibble over technicalities and specifications and whether or not uh, this thing has 16 ohms or 24, I can't help you. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, William. It takes me about a uh, half hour to make it uh, through a typical issue of the Houston Chronicle. I think uh, the Veritas is going to take me uh, several hours at the very least. <laughs> Did you get your copy yet? Received a copy today, yes, sir. And the article on the IRS seems extremely comprehensive. Uh, just, it's just exactly what I need to show to people trying to explain uh, why we, <laughs> we shouldn't have to pay income tax. What, were you shocked by what you read? No, I've been listening to you for too long. I understand <laughs> what's going on. Yeah. Well, did you did you find anything there that you didn't didn't know before? It's going to take me a couple hours to finish to go through the article piece by piece and digest it. I I, I just I've glanced over it, but it looks very very well put together. I thank you for it. Well, thank you. Mm. Uh, uh, regarding what's going on uh, with the police. Uh, uh, we had, uh, back on July 23rd in Houston, a uh, DEA agent was having a uh, pre-wedding party with his uh, friends. They tried to force their way into a topless club. The uh, owner of the club said there will be a $5 cover charge. The DEA agent said, no, I don't need to pay a cover charge. 
whereupon the DEA agent whipped out his gun and began shooting. And, uh... They, oh, no. These are people who protect us. They would never do anything like that. William, this, this uh, incident has demonstrated that uh, at least this man, I, I think he must be typical of the DEA agents, I think they purposely seek out murderers to hire. This man, the witnesses said they... Okay, the DEA agent that uh, did the shooting, let's see, his name was... Uh, uh, Pete J. Sinclair, S-I-N-C-L-A-I-R, Pete J. Sinclair, DEA agent. So he shot the club owner. Uh, he followed the club owner through plastic sheeting into a room under construction and fired several more shots. No one is sure how many shots Sinclair fired. At least six hit photo... Opulos, the club owner. Like the other witnesses, Fotopoulos said the shots were not rapid fire, but were slow and methodical. Well, yep, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the signs of a murderer, all right. Did you hear what they did in Washington, D.C., when they had their big convention there in, in memory of fallen officers? No, I did not. They wrecked hotels, they attacked women, they forced their way into rooms where people were sleeping, and just literally terrified hundreds of people. Tore the place to pieces. These were police officers from all over the country. People who protect us. People who are sworn to protect and defend the Constitution. The people who are screwing and tearing up the Constitution on a daily basis. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it too. This DEA agent, uh, fortunately someone found a gun and uh, fired back at him. Uh, the man lost a kidney, but his condition now is unknown as he was transferred from Bentob to Methodist Hospital under an alias about a week into his recovery. Yeah, and he had to be under an alias because uh, they sure don't want him testifying at any trial against police officers now, do they? Well, I would think any red-blooded doctor or nurse that knew who he was would uh, have seen that uh, his... Uh, hospitalization was extremely brief. Yeah. But anyway, that's so. Uh, that's what's going on here in uh, Houston. Of course, we've had uh, several incidents. Uh, uh, we had, uh, uh, I believe, for the second time in a row, uh, a drunken police officer uh, uh, pursued a uh, woman, a Negro, at night, uh, stopped her, and. Uh, uh, after an extensive chase uh, and um, murdered her on the side of the road and uh, he was um, uh, convicted uh, twice and he's out on uh, uh, I, th I think uh, I don't know bail or whatever or else he was uh, out on good behavior after serving three months uh -huh. <laughs> after and serving it was well established that he was drunk he's out on good behavior huh? Oh yeah. wonder how many people he put in jail for years because they were drunk well, all you've got to have is a badge and be drunk, and you've got a license to murder, is, is being demonstrated, has been demonstrated uh, two or three times within the past year in Houston. Let me tell you, my friend, and you are my friend, they don't need to be drunk. They're proving every day that all they need is the badge. The alcohol lowers the inhibition, so their, their real nature comes out for sure when they're drunk, but uh, their nature's there, drunk or not, is what you're saying, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're being hired now according to a psychological profile that ensures that they are not going to question, that they're going to carry out orders, and that they have the psychological makeup to use brute force. What do you, uh, think, what I, do you think about that? I'm glad our God is stronger than, <laughs> than the God they serve. Yeah. I, I only know right now one truly good police officer only know one. His name is Dave Mann. He's the one who made the tape about I Had a Dream. Yes. That's him. He's a personal friend of mine. And uh, until, just a, until just a couple days ago, he lived very close to where I live. And uh, he's moved. He was persecuted by his fellow officers in the Arizona Highway Patrol because he believes in the Constitution. I can believe that. Your um, your broadcast, or uh, you were knocked off satellite right after you said the Furman tape show. 
Oh, so well, it, it, we, we missed an awful lot. Tomorrow night I'll play the whole intro to tonight's broadcast again, just so uh, whoever knocked me off uh, doesn't get the satisfaction to think that he's thinking that he stopped anything from being disclosed, whoever it was. I, I had sent you a, uh, a, a excerpt, uh, Xerox, out of a book by Bill Jordan. I don't know if you remember it. Uh, it was on the subject of uh, uh, throw-down guns. Bill Jordan was assistant chief patrol inspector of the U.S. Border Patrol. Uh huh. And I sent you, uh, oh, looking at here, a copy of about half a dozen pages out of his book. What was the uh, premise? And, and can you make it real short? Oh, what was yeah, okay, he says uh, the subject of alibi guns. Uh, he tells about uh, uh, how everyone carries an alibi gun, and he tells... That's exactly what all the police officers have been telling me, and these guys keep calling me and telling me I'm full of it. He talks about an inquest uh, in which a Border Patrol officer encountered a man in the middle of a bridge over a large irrigation canal. Uh, the suspect fired and three times and missed with all three shots. And so uh, uh, later, uh, the, uh, the coroner's jury, uh, one of the jurymen, told Jordan privately and in strict confidence that it was the worst case of justifiable homicide he had ever seen. For in addition to the previously mentioned gun, this is Jordan's throwdown gun, there have been five more picked up by the magnet, all positively identified as having belonged to the deceased, and each with three shots fired. Yeah. Anyway, well, uh, it's, uh, that, that provides more or less incontrovertible evidence that uh, uh, throwdown guns are a reality. Oh, yeah. No, it, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like to call and get your two cents in, also, you ever hear of a whole family, including a four-year-old girl, being gassed in a hotel room because you had an argument in a restaurant? You ever hear of that, folks? Well, it happened to me and my family. They tried very hard to get me to hit somebody and I just absolutely refused so what they do they tried to break down the hotel room door and when they found out I wasn't going to let them in without a warrant they gassed the whole family including my four year old daughter don't tell me about how nice the police are it's bullshit the police today are just as much the enemy as we always thought the Russians were in fact the police today are doing in this country what we never believed could happen here and only thought could happen in the Soviet Union good evening you're on the air you think you advise the Constitution but if you get off the air that would be the solution they won't hear you no more Looney Cooper you're full of bullshit thank you Scott didn't think we knew who you were did you that's little poopy diaper Scott, folks. And we know exactly who he is because, you see, he forgets about caller ID. So, uh, <laughs> do it again and I'll tell him your last name, you little poopy diaper puke faced scumbag. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, thank you, Mr. Cooper. Yes. A charter subscriber to Veritas. I'm proud to be so. Wonderful. One word sums up this last issue, and that would have to be dynamite. Well, thank you. Congratulations on your baby girl. The oh. next day following the birth of your daughter, I was blessed with a beautiful eight-pound uh, granddaughter. Oh, well, congratulations to you, too. Just barely 24 hours apart. <laughs> it was quite a thrill. I enjoy poo. Listen to you every night faithfully. God bless you. I pray for all of you. And a message to your listeners, pray for America. Well, thank you. And, uh, yes, we all do need to pray for America. Very hard, because it's going downhill on a roller coaster. Yes. Things are escalating to the point where it's absolutely beyond insanity. Yes, I agree. And I think it's happening in every little small town and hamlet, and as well as large cities. And the things I hear is just mind-boggling. Never thought I'd ever witness it in my lifetime. Well, I never did either. And I thought uh, when I started my little little uh, mission here to uh, be a messenger and wake the people that uh, that uh, they would have awakened a long time before this, but it, uh, who knows. Have you had any reactions come out of um, this last issue of Veritas from um, the District of Kimmel? <laughs> uh, not yet. No, they, they haven't. Probably only a few of them have received it so far. Um, 
But uh, don't worry, there will be some kind of a reaction, I can tell you. What did you think? Have you read the article yet? Yes, I have read it. It was very, very good. And uh, I can tell your other listeners it will take several hours to wade through all that. But um, I thought it was very appropriate in the timing, particularly because of the Randy Weaver hearings and everything that's going on. And if this doesn't help bring some of that uh, to the knees, I don't know what it will take. Well... I have a feeling what it'll take. I dread it and don't want it, but if it happens, I'll be there <laughs> right on the front lines. Oh, uh, well, God's still in control, and that's the only solace we have. <laughs> you know, we just pray His will be done. Well, I, I think He's waiting for us to make some kind of a decision to find out what His will is going to be. Uh, that's really what I think. I don't think things are fated from the beginning at all. I think we do have a free will choice. I think there are many examples in the Bible of when things were supposed to happen and because people did something other than what they were expected to do, God spared them. So, Right. We're just suffering the consequences of our actions. That's right. I've said many times, if you want to know what's wrong with America, go in the bathroom and look in the mirror. That's right. God is a God of justice, fairness. Yes. But he's also a, a God of judgment. And so many of your churches today, all they preach is, you know, God is love. All they preach is, I'm 501c3, and I want your money. Yeah. He, That's what they really preach. But he was really a, a God of discipline and, and, and judgment as well. Well, this isn't a religious broadcast, so let's not no. get off into that. But, no, that's true. But I know that you do have a deep and abiding faith. I don't think you'd be doing what you're doing if you didn't. That's true. I would have walked away from it a long time ago. Oh, bless your family. Thank Just you. Just a big kiss. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 520-333-4578. Good evening. You're on the air. Bill. Yes. Enjoy your show when you're not being jammed. Thank you. Calling you from Maryland. Oh, the People's Republic just made a treaty with the United Nations. Oh, yeah. No, wasn't that lovely? Oh, it's unconstitutional. Have you read the Constitution lately? Oh, absolutely. No state can enter into any agreement, treaty, or anything with any foreign country or other state or anything else. Or form a compact. Or form a compact. That's right. Well, he's uh, he's a uh, governor that's walking a fine line between fraud and treason anyway. Well, when he did that, he committed treason. He did something actively oh, yeah. against the Constitution for the United States of America and in support of our enemies' world government. Well, uh, you, uh, you got time for me to tell you about his election? Uh, no, I don't think we got time for that, but he has committed... I it's questionable. He's committed treason, and everybody in Maryland should be telling him that. Well, uh, they, we got a real sheeple here. What I wanted to ask you is, uh, is there a particular good time for me to call um, the uh, research center during the day? No, there never is. I have warm, I have warm body. Oh, uh, yeah, you can call Veritas and talk to Mike. Uh, okay, but, uh, I'd like to get some information mailed to me about your radio and the satellite dish because I'm trying to convince a couple. We don't have anything like that. I keep trying to yeah, tell no, you. No, 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 just a listing of what the equipment is. We're, we're not in that business. For us to go down and make out some kind of a catalog or a price list and all that kind of stuff and get it printed out and send it out to everybody puts us in the satellite business, and we're not in it, and I don't want to be in it. Okay, he can tell me on the phone, though. Yeah, he can tell you what he knows. <laughs> I've got uh, two people up in Baltimore, I think, interested in setting one up. Um, what I would suggest is that you buy the tape that night that we did it, because everything is on the tape. Now, the problem is that uh, quite often you get wiped out, and I don't I miss you know, about... No, the first, tape. But you the say. tape. Excuse me. The tape. You can order the tape from us. Well, Ste know what stereo, hi-fi, studio quality. There is no jamming on the tape. Well, that's fine, but I don't remember the date. That's the problem. Anyway, I'll, I'll call and uh, try to figure out what I can get. And uh, Oh, go away. You know, I'm tired of you panty-waste patriots who uh, couldn't spend $10 to help support us in our effort. You want a deal. <laughs> well, go somewhere else and get your deal. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, Bill. I uh, sent you some stuff over the mail. I don't know if you got it yet or not. I'm John from Houston. Uh-huh. And some of the things that I sent you was a uh, federal judge had ruled the extradition law unconstitutional. This was from the Houston Chronicle. It was a, uh, a Scripps Howard story that came out September 3rd uh, that a federal judge has ruled that the 147-year-old U.S. extradition law is unconstitutional. 
Uh, so who knows, maybe from here there won't be any more of those John Dumaniuk uh, fiascos that we've witnessed. Well, it's only unconstitutional if you're a United States citizen or if you're a citizen of a state. The Supreme Court ruled many, 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 many years ago that nobody can take away your citizenship. Yeah. Now, a couple of other... That's really what that ruling was all about. Well, what this other fellow from Houston forgot to tell you, a very interesting thing happened on Channel 26, which is the local Fox television affiliate here last week. They showed that our local jackbooted thugs, the feds, have opened up a new training center just north of Houston near the town of Conroe, about 30 miles north of town. And it showed them flying in there with their black helicopters and the uh, black hooded masks and all that, and they're, they're jumping off the helicopter with machine guns, and they're, you know, uh, engaging their targets. And then these other two clowns dressed like uh, Capone-era hoods uh, pull up in a fully restored 1930s-era automobile with Tommy guns, and they start blasting away their targets. It's a big joke to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's basically insanity on their part. But uh, I called up a couple of the local talk show hosts uh, here on KPRC Radio are finally coming around to seeing that what happened to the people in Waco as well as what happened to the people up in Ruby Ridge was nothing short of murder. You know, I've been harping on this thing ever since that happened. Absolutely. They set out to kill those people. Oh, absolutely, because the two lawyers who were going to defend the Davidians, uh, Dick DeGaron and Jack Zimmerman, would have cleaned the clocks of any of those worthless federal prosecutors. These guys are top-notch attorneys. Wait till you read Veritas this time. Yeah. You're going to find out how much of a scam it is, how crooked these people really are, how you've been ripped off for your whole life, how they are nothing but crooks, criminals. They're, they are actually participating in constructive fraud on a massive scale. Let me tell you what else is happening here. Locally, there's been a lot of, I think, uh, CFR uh, press about Colin Powell running for the presidency and all this and that. Well, some of these, all these sheeple were calling in at the talk show today, and then I called in, and they were saying, oh, how wonderful these so-called conservatives that Colin Powell would be. And I reminded these idiots that Colin Powell is a CFR member. And I gave them the address and the phone number <clears throat> of the CFR up in New York if they wanted to contact them to verify this. And I pointed out what Barry Goldwater had to say in his book with no apologies about the CFR and the Trilateral Commission and what their ultimate goal is. And so basically I threw a lot of ice water on a lot of idiot sheeple who were thinking that uh, as the media was cultivating them the same way they did with Jimmy Carter back in 1976, that, uh, you know, oh, why, he's a good old middle American farm boy, and he's a, you know, good old peanut farmer, and this and that, when in fact it's just another one of a series of Rockefeller stooges that the media is grooming us for as being our savior for the next presidential election, when you and I both know better. <laughs> yeah, there are no saviors, and all candidates lead the world government. I don't care who it is. Oh, and also another thing I sent you, this was in a brown envelope, and I figure you should have gotten it by today. Uh, there was a little clipping in the Chronicle also back in August 25th that the World Health Organization said that the uh, Ebola virus epidemic was over. Now, isn't that convenient? It said an epidemic of the Ebola virus that killed nearly 250 people in Zaire is over, the World Health Organization announced Thursday. Ebola is transmitted through bodily fluids and secretions and causes massive internal bleeding, bleeding diarrhea, and vomiting. The cause of the disease is still unclear. Oh, no, it's not unclear. It always comes from a monkey. Oh, like they did with the AIDS virus. That's right. It comes from a monkey. Sure. And they somebody, call, somebody out there in the jungles kissing monkeys. Well, right? you know, they, <laughs> what they want us to think, that's how 7 million people contracted AIDS overnight. But there was a doctor who appeared on Johnny Carson's show years ago when he was the head of The Tonight Show. I forgot the man's name. He had a Jewish-sounding name, Super Guy. And this guy pointed out that the AIDS virus began when the World Health Organization deliberately inoculated uh, 7 million Africans with uh, I, infected I, uh, smallpox virus. I wrote that in my book. Not only Africans, but uh, homosexuals in New York, Chicago, uh, Los Angeles, and I forget where else. This doctor was a regular guest on Carson's show, but after that visit, I never saw or heard of the man again. Probably didn't. Listen, i got to let you go. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for calling. 520-333-4578. Oh, and by the way, folks, the, the, the little poopy diapers, his name really isn't Steve. I'm just trying to teach him a lesson without having to hurt him. But his name does start with an S, and he knows who he is, and he knows I know who he is, and we know his last name. And if it happens again, we'll tell you his whole name, uh, which begins with an S. And, uh, you know, I'm just tired of 
little poopy diapers. He has a grudge. He's a socialist, puke-faced, dirty-bottomed, scumbag little child. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Bill. It's uh, the Birdman from Brooklyn. How you doing? Good. Good. A couple of things I wanted to uh, to, to tell you. Um, there's a, Anne Rice has a new book out that, in my opinion, comes straight out of the mysteries. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Uh, Memnock the Devil. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, wait a minute. I did. I saw that book. Okay. Um, I have a copy of it. As soon as my mom's done reading it, I'll, I'll shoot it out to you. Just You might not. You probably won't want to read the whole book, but there, uh, there's a lot of stuff that, to me, that, you know, you remember you were talking about how the socialists, you know, good is bad and bad is good and light is dark and dark is light and all that? Right. Really switches everything around, and it gives a good microcosm as to why people are so um, confused in a Luciferian way. Uh-huh. Might be very interested in it, you know. Okay, um, great. Okay, another thing, speaking of the mysteries, I wanted to ask you is, how do I get it? You, you've talked about your mystery series a couple of times, and I really have to uh, eventually buy that. How, how do I get a, a copy of that? Just, uh, you need to, I don't even know the price, I, to tell you the truth. You need to, because I don't handle any of that stuff, but you need to call and talk to Annie, um, or else write to Annie and ask for a price list and an updated tape list, and she'll send it right along to you. Yeah, whatever it is, it's got to be worth it, because I have a couple of reruns from that series. I, I think for non-members, it's around $285. For members, it's less than that, but I can't remember the price, and I'm not sure about the 285 Right, right. Okay, well, like I said, I'll definitely, that's something I'm definitely going to be saving my pennies for. Uh, also, you notice the damage control on the Randy Weaver situation within the local media? Oh, they're trying hard, but it's not going to work. All of this stuff has backfired on them so bad that... Uh, they're they're really desperate. Now let me let me ask you this: Do you, Is it possible that it's all part of the uh, Hegel, the, the dialectic that they're that they're actually allowing some of this to come through as as part of their damage control? Because it seems to me, um, I've I've been talking about Weaver to everybody for the last year and a half, basically actually two years. I think it's been since you started broadcasting it, and uh, and I started doing the research in it. And nobody ever heard of it. The news never even covered it. That's right. All of a sudden, my father called me up, who I was telling you about the last time I, I had spoken to you, and he was like, Paul, they, they, they had a Randy Weaver special today, and he was amazed at the, I was amazed at the forthrightness with which they actually um, covered it. Mm -hmm. And also with, the, with Nichols, I mean, they actually, um, Dateline did a special on, uh, on, on Nichols on his farm, on his ranch, whatever, whatever he called it, and they just let him talk. They didn't interrupt him. They didn't cut him. They didn't edit him. They didn't bleep him. No little mind control propaganda games that they normally do, like, you know, government huh. hating, uh, anti Semite, or whatever it is that they, they. They just let this guy talk. I think they're getting desperate, and they don't. They, I think they're trying now to appease the people like us who are really. who have been saying all of this for so long. Well, the the news media um, lost their credibility, and they may be trying to gain a bit of it back. They'll never gain it back, as far as I'm concerned. The media is not credible anymore. They're just a pack of liars. They are the communist news network, and uh, uh, you can't trust anything that they ever say. And I think that they know that, and I think they're trying very hard to instill in the people some confidence in the in the news media. Uh, but once you give them that confidence, they'll just go back to, to the same old way, and they're still the same old way. It's just the appearance yeah. uh, that they're, you know, it's, it's all smoke and mirrors, and it's, it's baloney. So don't, don't fall for it, not even for a second. Well, it's like the guy who habitually beats his wife, you know. She, he's, every time he does it, he swears that he's never going to do it again, and she believes him. That's right. <laughs> well, that's really what happens. Um... Uh, also, I, I, I was, every, time, every time I pass a Federal Depository Library, I'm assuming they're located in the Federal Reserves, right? In the Federal Reserve buildings? or is that oh, no, they, no, they can be in, in any building, just, just about. You never know where they're going to be, but you have to look it up. Right, because I've been reading a lot of, I think I mentioned it before, I've been reading a lot of the books that you had told me to read, and now I'm ready to actually start, you know, start going into the Federal Depository. And the stupid question I have to ask you, you're probably laughing at me, is um, where do I start in terms of of of, of the, the federal depository material? I already know what you know what I've been learning and researching, but I really need to now just start tying this stuff together coherently. I well, you, you have to pick a, a subject to tie together. I mean, you can't just go in there and start reading at random, and you have to be looking for something. Um, and w what I would suggest that you start with is. Um, 
is the United Nations, and once you've satisfied yourself that you really know what that's really all about, then you can go to the Disarmament Agency and the uh, Disarmament Treaty, Public Law 97 or 87-297. Uh, and uh, from there, uh, you know, you can you'll you'll find your way once you start to understand how it works. Right. And uh, you you'll weave your way through all of these treaties and and the uh, laws and United States Code and statutes at large and federal regulations and the Congressional Record and the and the uh, Federal Register. And remember what the librarians are there for. They're there to help you, and they will. And um, you want to make friends with the librarians. And every day that you go in, you know, bring them something because their life is pretty boring most of the time. Uh, and uh, people, you know, make demands on them and don't really treat them right sometimes. So, you know, take them a bouquet of flowers and, and uh, you know, treat them like decent people, and they'll you'd be surprised what they can help you dig out. Yeah, because you know what it is? I'm a good researcher, but I've, I've mostly researched, aside from the, the Patriot stuff that I've been doing now, I've mostly researched basic sciences, because I'm in, I think I told you, I'm in my chiropractic college, and I have to do so much research in terms of that area. And I know I can apply that to what, you know, to what I've been, in fact, I've proved it, because I've been buying all the books and everything. And I'm in a position now where I'm really, you know, I'm really ready to start to start going deeper than what I've been doing now and I'm really happy that I'm at that point now. It's like I already know what's going on and, and now it's just a matter of just proving it to myself. Yeah. So. And don't forget to try to uh, put some of it in the front of the noses of other people. That's what I've been doing, yeah. And, yeah. That, and that's, that, that's all due to you, by the way. And I, you know, because you, you're, you're a bold voice of truth. You go out of your way and you just, you know, you, you stand out and, and you don't care what people think. And you've put yourself on the line, you've put your family on the line, you've put your way of life on the line. And, and you know that's that's an example. That's a shining example to all of us. And, and I know I, for one, and I'm sure many, many, many of your listeners, aside from uh, Jerko that called you a little while ago, I really appreciate that. <laughs> his name starts with an S, and I won't say it tonight. But if he calls again tomorrow night, I'm going to tell everybody his whole name. He lives in the state of Michigan, by the way. I, I can't. You know, these idiots don't even have the intelligence to privatize their line before they prank people. <laughs> well, that's because they're so they're so smart, you know. <laughs> <laughs> See, the funny thing is, uh, the funny thing is, is, is this is what I, I um, a lot of people have a lot of trouble dealing with the issues that you're talking about, and actually, uh, because I guess because of the profession I'm going into, um, it made it very easy because I've always felt persecuted from the medical profession. I mean, anything that's out, you, you've said this many times, anything that's outside of the jurisdiction of, of surgery and drugs is completely blasted by the AMA and, and by affiliate organizations. Uh -huh. And so I've, so I've I've dealt with this for so long that, that when I when I started listening to the Patriot broadcast, I started realizing, oh, it's even deeper than that. I, that's just actually a microcosm. Uh -huh. And, 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 and that made a lot of sense, a couple of the broadcasts you did on, on, on medicine. I, I couldn't believe how well uh, versed a lot of your guests are and you are on, on the medicine aspect of things. I'd actually, you sent me to uh, Yale's medical library, and I, a couple of times I actually had to go there. But, um, you know, once again, thanks a lot for everything. And uh, uh, that other, I don't know, did you get that, uh, that other bird that I sent you, the red, white, and blue one yet? Not yet. But we haven't been to the uh, post office in about three days. Okay, no problem. Well, you, when you get that, enjoy. I set you a couple extra wings and tails and stuff in case they, you know, they don't last forever. So Great. Uh, we're running out of time. I got to let you go. Okay, thanks a lot, man. Good night. Okay. okay, folks, that just about does it. Good night. God bless you all. If you're a police officer, stop it. Stand up. Even if you lose your job, it's not worth it. Someday you're gonna have to face us. And you better be clean.